One of the trickier topics in inventory, which is part of FAR, is to understand what happens when inventory is understated or overstated. The exam loves to ask questions like, if the company were to understate inventory, what's the impact to net income after making the adjustment? So that is what this template's gonna help us do. And this is really applicable to when a company uses the periodic method, meaning what they do at the end of the year is they count their ending inventory. And they would say, in this case, it's 30,000. So they could use this inventory roll forward, which uses the base method to figure out what cost of goods sold is. Right? We know our beginning inventory. We know inventory purchases. So that means we know cost of goods available for sale. And if we know ending inventory, then cost of goods sold is the plug. So let's say that the company says, well, our ending inventory balance is 30,000. Now, what we're gonna do is show what happens when they actually need to make an adjustment because inventory is understated. And then we'll look to see what the impact is to say the various aspects of the income statement, as well as the balance sheet, particularly retained earnings. That is a uh, area of focus that the exam loves to look at. So what we'll do is go ahead and plug in 20,000. And what this means is that the company says, well, our inventory balance was understated by 20,000. So as we can see, if we add 20,000, that means the corrected balance should have been 50,000. And we can see what the journal entry would be. We would debit inventory to increase it by 20,000. And then we would credit cost of goods sold to actually remove $20,000 worth of cost of goods sold, meaning cost of goods sold was previously 300,000, but now it's 280,000. Right, so if ending inventory is understated, well, that means cost of goods sold was overstated, which is why we're removing $20,000 of cost of goods sold. So what's the impact to the income statement? Let's start there. Well, that $20,000 uh, reduction in cost of goods sold, there it is, right? And now we can see our corrected balance is 280,000. And how does that flow all the way down to net income? Well, it would increase net income by 20,000, right? So we're going from 40,000 to 60,000. And that's because we're removing cost of goods sold from the income statement, right? We're reducing the amount of expense. Now, on the balance sheet side, well, we can see that inventory is increased by 20,000 up to that 50,000 that is now our accurate amount and retained earnings. So the current thing we need to know about retained earnings is that current year net income it gets rolled into retained earnings. So really it's the beginning balance plus current year net income, right? And if we previously had 50,000 and now we're adding um, basically an additional 20,000 of increased net income, right? That's gonna increase our retained earnings and that's gonna be up to 70,000, right? So if we had to ask, how does an understatement of inventory impact the balance sheet? Well, inventory is gonna increase as well as retained earnings will increase. The only thing that's gonna decrease is cost of goods sold by 20,000. And again, we can see that with our journal entry. So this is very important to understand. Um, you know, you can plug in other numbers, but understand how when inventory is understated, it impacts the income statement and balance sheet. Um, this Excel template, you can download it in the Ask Joey Q&A page and play around with the numbers yourself so that you fully understand this topic.